Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming Videos. My name is Holo and today I have a pretty exciting video from me. This is my first time rating the weapons of Elden Ring. What I've done today is I've gone through several different weapons for strength weapons. Quite a lot actually. I brought them to plus 10 or plus 25 and then I've got my strength to 80 which is the soft cap and then I have checked the AR on all of these weapons with both one hand and two hand to determine which are the top five strength weapons in Elden Ring based on raw damage as well as yeah their movesets and what I think of them. Now for you to understand how we've worked this out to work out the highest numbers the actual damage numbers of these strength weapons I need to explain to you what AR is and how you can do affinity scaling to make your strength weapons better. AR is just the term that we use to refer to your true damage so if you look at this weapon it's a standard great sword it's a plus 14 and so currently it has 297 base damage that comes from it being a great sword plus 14 if i were to make it a plus 15 then that base damage would go up the number next to that 222 that is the scaling number so that damage is coming from the attribute scaling you can see that right now this great sword gives me a c scaling on strength and a e scaling on dex the higher grade, the more damage that number is going to be. What's also interesting is it matters whether you're one-handed or two-handed, right? You're going to do more damage if you two-hand a weapon. So instead of having 222 damage, I'm going to two-hand it. And now it's gone up to 248. Now what you can do is actually go to status and then check your R armament 1, the armament in your right-hand slot, the first slot. And if I one-hand... It's going to go down to 519. It is awesome when you have a standard weapon like the Greatsword here. Because that means you can change its scaling, its affinity. And also you can change the Ash of War itself to perhaps something better. Right now it starts with this stamp with the uppercut. Maybe I want something different. So let's go to any grace and then use our whetstones to change the affinity. So I'm going to pick the Greatsword. I'm going to pick any any single um, Ash of War doesn't matter. And you can see all my different affinities here. So naturally, I have 80 strength right now. I want to do a strength weapon. Heavy is the way to go. Because what that does is it makes the scaling on strength go up. So instead of being a C scaling, it's going to be a B scaling. The base damage is going to go down to 275 from 297. But the scaling damage is going from 248 to 350. That is 102. So yes, if you're doing a strength build, if you can make your weapon a heavy weapon using its affinity scaling, that is what you should do. And as you can see, I can do this with any of the Ashes of War. It's quite interesting. So what I do is I take this and I change the scaling. It's going to want to make it a sacred weapon, right? But that would mess up all my scaling. It's going to take my strength scaling down to an E. It could be some faith and dex. I don't need any of that. We want to make it heavy. So it's just scaling with heavy. There we go. It's staying the same damage as it was with the other Ash of War at 350. And now... I have this Ash of War. Let's try another example. Instead of having that holy Ash of War, I have the stump. So that's how that works, and you definitely want to make use of it. Let's get into the top five strength AR weapons. And number five, we might actually surprise you with our first fifth highest AR strength weapon. It's a humble halberd. It's the Gargoyle's heavy halberd, in fact. At plus 25, we have a physical hit of 275, which is very low. Honestly, that's very low. But from the scaling, we are getting 507 damage thanks to the strength scaling at, set at an S rating. So through its ridiculous scaling, the humble Gargoyle's halberd is actually one of the better strength weapons. Just because something's AR is high doesn't make it a good weapon. Ultimately, if a weapon is good because you enjoy it, it's effective when you use it, you like the moveset, then use it. Just because the numbers are higher, technically, you know, the difference isn't that much. It's what you enjoy. And I and now I'm going to go against where I was leading you with that and say, yeah, the moveset of this weapon is actually pretty good and underrated. <laughs> the four hit R1, I think, is solid, right? You've got nice wide slashes and then an occasional slam at the beginning. It's not bad. The R2 is a spin attack 
attack, which you can combo into, of course, another spin attack. So you've got pretty nice range. You can catch people out in PvP with that. And it's running R1 is much like a Spears poke, which is incredible for catching out people who are running or spam rolling. The sprinting R2 is similar, but more of a wide swing. So maybe you could hit multiple targets with that. And when you think about heavy strength weapons, you know, with the big AR hits, I imagined you weren't thinking of a pretty quick attacking halberd. You know, we've got range and we've got speed at which these attacks come out. It's shockingly effective. And you're probably wondering, okay, maybe if you're interested, if you like halberds, where do you get it? Lindell, the royal capital. And you're going to want to come to the west capital rampart, Grace. And out here on our right is going to be an enemy that's pretty hard to miss, to be honest. Uh, I don't have him right now, but I'll show a clip of him alive. It's a big gargoyle. You're going to have to kill him. And when you do kill him, he will drop it. So that's how you get the gargoyle's halberd. And again, I, I can't believe a weapon that is pretty damn quick like this with the range that this has. Being a strength weapon and being one of the highest AR strength weapons at that. So if you're into this moveset, not a bad pick. Coming in at number four then, might surprise you, might not. It's the Ruins great sword. I think this is an interesting one because when we actually go to look at the status right, you're not going to see a number two spot. You're going to see 959 AR, meaning this is actually not the fourth best or fourth highest rather uh, AR. It's number one for strength weapons, but that's why it's deceiving. It's important to be aware of how it works. Physical damage is 303 at the baseline of plus 10. And then the scaling damage is 554, not 957, but 857. Where's that extra 100 coming from? It's coming from the magic damage, which is 100 total. You'd expect a weapon like this to not scale as well if it's got the dual damage like that. But despite that, despite all logic, it's scaling at an S strength. So yes, ridiculously strong weapon. 857 AR for physical, and then you got an extra 100 from the magic if you're able to combine these and you're dealing with an enemy that's either not resistant to magic or even better, weak to magic. Your base R2 costs no ashes of war, sorry, no FP, and you get some magic damage. That's awesome. Then you have the unique Ash of War. This is a unique weapon, meaning it has an Ash of War we cannot change. So yeah, we can't make this a heavy Ruins Greatsword, but who cares? It's already at an S scaling. It can't go higher than that, so it's solid. So if this Ash of War is good, then this is a serious contender for one of the best strength weapons in the game, right? Good thing that Ash of War is absolutely ridiculous then, isn't it? That is the Wave of Destruction Ash of War. It has insane range and it's wide as hell. Brilliant for PvP, but my god, in PvE, awesome for cleaning out enemies and AoEing them, as I'm going to show in a sec. For its general moveset, it is just a colossal sword, right? We have a triple light attack combo. And then we have the unique R2 with a magic burst. Pretty nice. Then we have like the crouching R1 or the rolling R1, which is a poke. One of the best moves for a great sword, 100%. All right, here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'll do for me. To get it, though, you're going to have to prove it. You're going to have to earn it. We're going to have to come to Red Main Castle at the bottom side of Kaelid. And you're going to need to defeat a boss in the courtyard that I'm actually standing in right now at the Plaza Grace. Uh, to get it to activate, I believe you have to go speak to the guy up top, the announcer. And then this area will become a boss fight zone. And upon defeating the boss, you will get yourself your ruined greatsword. A bit of a rough gem, in my opinion. A surprise one. And number three, it's a versatile beast. It's barely a sword, really. More like a big lump of iron. Guts fans rejoice, because yes... The Greatsword is, in fact, one of the strongest weapons in Elden Ring. For a strength build, this is number three for highest AR, which is incredible, and it should be, I'm very glad. As you can see, it is 349 at its base of 25 upgraded, and with the heavy scaling, if we get to a strength scaling of A, that gives us 525 extra physical damage. That puts us at a total of... 875 all right not bad right not bad at all considering this is 
just a classic and iconic weapon that I've been using in, in every goddamn Souls game. It's a solid weapon with an incredible moveset. It's got the great sword poke. People seem to never expect this in PvP. I don't know why. It's been a thing forever. You know, you used to have to roll for it, but now we can crouch poke, so it's even better. This weapon just feels incredible. And with the jumping plunge attack as well, I spam that way too much in PvE. I also run this with the Horfrost Stomp in PvP. It seems to catch people out pretty well. It's got nice AoE. It's got the slowing effect of the freeze. Good for someone who's trying to range you like a, a cheeky spellcaster or something. I love this weapon. I love this moveset. And honestly, even though it's the third highest on AR, I think this is going to be my favorite strength weapon flat out just because of the moveset. And what's absolutely wonderful about this weapon, other than the fact that it's totally impaling torrent when I put it on my back because it's just a huge sword, is the fact that you could technically come here, you know, the moment you come out of the first step, you could run here and get this for yourself. We are at the Rock View balcony, which you, again, you could just run technically past every enemy and make your way up here and come to the Rockview val balcony. And then we're going to progress along this path to go pick it up. And you may find as you come this way, there's going to be a lot of dogs that are very scary. But if you come the way I've just shown you, it's not even an issue. And they're right below me, but there's nothing they can do to stop me from dropping down here, right here, and opening this. And that's where you get the great sword. Super easy. And number two for highest AR strength weapon and a brilliant strength weapon suggestion. We have this horrific looking red hammer. I mean, look at it. Look at the way it's made. I wouldn't want to touch this thing, but it is extremely fun to use thanks to its ridiculous A scaling strength, 332 plus 586 damage from the scaling that comes out to 919 attack power, pure physical that's nuts. But you know, it's not just a powerhouse for damage. It has one of my favorite movesets in the game. We have this triple slam where he's kind of spinning around to do it. And then we have a double heavy. You know, you don't always see a double heavy with a weapon this slow and heavy. But God, that's meaty. That's meaty. The crouch R1 or rolling R1 is a nice downward slam to catch someone out. But you know, actually, I think my favorite attack is not the running R1. But actually, the running R2. I really like that. I feel like it comes out pretty quick. You're going to get a big hit off that. This thing is absolutely nuts. And you probably want to know where to get it. You're going to want to come here at Mount Gilmer or the specific Seath Water Terminus Grace. We're going to Fort Laid here, which is at the northwestern point of the whole Volcano Manor region. And we're just going to go in here. Up top on the right, you're going to find the entrance. And inside, we are going to find this lovely man who is literally holding it, as you can see. As soon as you kill him, it drops. Now, let me see what I can do with a big R2. Oh, my God. Half of his damage in one single hit. Let's give him the L2. I can do that, too. Oh, my God. Sorry, I'm, I'm still going. I'm still going. I'm not bothered about him. I want to go in this room. <laughs> I'm still going. <laughs> that is the incredible prelates charge. It's actually an Ash of War you have to go and get rather than it being part of this weapon. So uh, yeah, definitely recommend that. It's a really fun combination. But of course, when you do kill him, he's going to drop the hammer and it's really as easy as that. You just have to get yourself here. Surprise! Before I show you the actual number one, I want to make perhaps the number one one-handed strength weapon suggestion. Yeah, one-handed. It requires a reasonable 22 strength and 12 decks to use, and then it has solid stats. So when I'm one-handed, of course, the scaling's not going to be as good. So we're going from the AR of 739 to the AR of 690. Why do I want to do less damage? Well, you know, think about it. This weapon weighs just 10. The other weapons of this list weigh 23, 23, 23. It weighs less than half of the other weapons. And its AR is only a little bit less, even when one-handed. Therefore, this is arguably the best strength weapon for one-handing and using with a shield. You could even go for a great shield, meaning Whoever's attacking you is going to have a damn hard time hitting you. And I tell you, in Elden Ring with the new counter block, which I use way less than I'd like to with my current endgame builds, 
I love that. In a boss fight, that's going to be great. To get the Great Styles Mace then, you're going to need to come to the Altus Plateau, to this Grace here of the northern side, this side path. And we're just going to head down from the Grace, down the road, and you can immediately see a caravan right here. To stop these, all you need to do is go hit one of the giants, and they will just chill and wait. And then you can just come up here and loot the chest. If you want, you can fight these guys. I just took a hit and opened it, grabbed the item, took a hit, ran away. And it's pretty much that easy. So yeah, with the fact that you can one-hand this, it's a reliable way to use some shields or maybe two-hand another weapon and do some power stance, whatever you want. This is my number one suggestion for a one-handing strength weapon. And at number one, the highest AR weapon for strength builds is this absolute beast. This thing on the end of a stick. We're talking about the Giant's Crusher at plus 25 and with the affinity of heavy, you have an S scaling. And as you can see, it requires 60 strength to even begin using in one hand. 330 plus 617 damage. So that accumulates to 947 attack power on every swing. That is the highest in the game. This is the strength weapon for, you know, max raw damage, max raw physical. So if you're wanting to do the biggest and heaviest hits, this is your guy. And what's interesting is the moveset I personally really like. We have the downward slam triple combo in light attack. If we two hand, it's almost the exact same thing, but a bit more um to it, a bit more wide sweep. And then in the R2, the heavy, it is a flip slam, which is solid. Two hand, a flip slam. Still just wonderful. And then we have like the crouch roll attack, the back step R1. It's a lot of slamming. That's what this weapon's all about. That's what you're looking to do. You're looking to crush with a hammer, and that's what this moveset is. I quite like it. I've heard some people say they're not into it. Maybe it's because it's quite, you know, it literally you just slam the hammer, and that's kind of the thing you do. But I think it's solid. For what it's doing, for its purposes, you can't go wrong with that. So if you are a respectable bonking man, you know, unga bunga playstyle and all that, you're looking to crush someone's poise. Shields mean nothing to me with this weapon then yeah, this is the way to go. And it's just extremely fun. Ah, God, dude, nearly 1,600 on a single hit. Let's try my Ash of War. I've got Golden Land on. Uh, should give me some poise to smack this guy. So here we go. Slam. Basically, this thing absolutely trucks damage. It's ridiculous. It deserves to be number one. I think everyone who's aware of strength weapons and has an actual look into it, this is obviously going to be number one. Its AR is just nuts, and I think it's a great weapon. If you're into hammers, you can't go wrong with this. To get yourself this giant crushing hammer then, you need to come to the Altus Plateau region. You want to come to the Outer Wall Phantom Tree Grace, and you want to, as I can see it from down there, come up this hill and come to this encampment. Inside of a chest, in this carriage right here, is of course the hammer that you are looking for. Naturally, there will be a mini boss that you must defeat in your way here. Uh, once you've done that, you can go ahead and loot the hammer or whatever, but that's where you get it. But there you have it, the top five strength weapons, the ones that have the most AR scaling with strength, of course, as well as my bonus suggestion of the best one-handed strength option. I hope this gave you some food for thought for maybe an endgame build or long-term plan for you and your playthrough. And I do hope that the information with what AR is and how to work out what a good weapon is does come in handy. If this video has been useful to you, please drop a like. I put a lot of work into this one. Of course, we've got lots more Elden Ring content coming at you here on the channel, so subscribe if you want to see more of that. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage, is, uh, goodbye.